the Second Sino-Japanese War. In 1937, Japanese forces took Beijing in order to consolidate control of North China. While Chiang Kai-shek had tolerated the Japanese taking Manchuria, he fought back when they took Beijing. Chiang reluctantly agreed to a truce and alliance with communist forces to fight the Japanese. In 1937, the Battle of Shanghai was fought between the Chinese forces and Japan, with Japan winning a huge victory. The Japanese government wanted to preserve its military strength for a showdown with the Soviet Union, but its generals in the field continued attacks in China. Japan took Shanghai and Wuhan, but the Chinese continued to resist Japan. Japan instituted a wide-scale bombing of civilian targets, but this did not destroy the Kuomintang or its allies. Japan adopted a military strategy of kill all, loot all, burn all to break Chinese spirit. By 1940, the war was at a stalemate, with a weak Kuomintang waiting for Japan to make the mistake of attacking the U.S. in some way. The Kuomintang and Communists were fighting each other in areas outside of Japanese occupation. Foreign nations were also heavily involved in influencing the outcome of the fighting between the Communists and Kuomintang and the fight between China and Japan. In 1941, a huge battle occurred between Kuomintang and the Communists in Anhui, in this area. Each side blamed the other for starting the battle, but the result was the destruction of a major portion of the Communist army. However, public opinion swayed against the Kuomintang, with most people feeling that Chinese shouldn't be fighting each other with the Japanese in their country. Japan controlled North China, and the east coast of China down into Southeast Asia. These territories in pink. The Japanese sometimes used local warlords already in place to control the population. The United States provided aid and support to the Kuomintang to fight the Japanese. The Kuomintang endured the majority of the fighting against the Japanese while the communists harassed the Japanese without engaging them as much, though they too suffered losses. As the United States dropped the atomic bombs on Japan in 1945, the Soviet army attacked the Japanese in Manchuria. The Japanese force there was easily defeated and Japan surrendered to the Soviets. The Kuomintang had no troops in Manchuria, so the U.S. airlifted many to North China. While this was being accomplished, the Soviets took most of the industrial equipment from the territory and allowed the Communist Chinese to take captured weapons. Still, both the Kuomintang and the Communists were left very weak after the end of World War II. Post-War Struggle This map shows the state of China at the end of World War II. Pink areas show where the Japanese had occupied Chinese territory, and the areas with the diagonal markings show where the Communists had base areas. Chiang allied himself with various warlords again to fight the communists. However, some of these same warlords had helped the Japanese during World War II and much of the Chinese population resented Chiang for using these same men to fight fellow Chinese. However, his own forces were too weak to fight the communists on their own. On June 26, the two sides were back at war. General Marshall of the U.S. tried to negotiate a ceasefire and a coalition government. During this negotiation, Chiang demilitarized approximately one and a half million troops, most of them under the command of his warlord allies. These troops felt abandoned by Chiang and were without work. Many of them joined the communists. However, the communists also demilitarized one million troops as part of peace negotiations. The Communists expelled many soldiers they deemed politically unreliable, middle to upper class troops for example, and, many, and many of these troops were killed or jailed by the Communists. So many former Communist troops joined the Nationalists. The talks broke down and an all-out war resumed. Most of the world 
supported Chang, and he had a larger and better army, but enough of the Chinese population resented his government, and he was facing a difficult challenge. In March 1947, the Kuomintang took the communist capital of Yunnan, here, but the communists continued striking back. The communists won the Liu Shan campaign and took North China. The nationalists lost many soldiers and supplies and were now weaker overall than the communists. The Huai Hai campaign lasted from November 1948 to January 1949 and resulted in the Kuomintang losing all territory north of the Yangtze River. The Ping Jin campaign occurred at the same time here and resulted in the nationalists losing Beiping and Tianjin. Both sides lost many troops in both these campaigns, but the communists pushed on. On April 21st, the communists crossed the Yangtze River and captured Nanjing, the Kuomintang capital. Here. On October 1st, 1949, Mao Zedong proclaimed the People's Republic of China with its capital, Beiping, now renamed Beijing. Chiang and about two million nationalists fled into Taiwan. The communist pursuit was stopped at Kinmen at the Battle of Kuning Tao. In December 1949, Chiang proclaimed Taiwan the temporary capital of the Republic of China. In 1950, the communists took the islands of Hainan and Shaoshan. The U.S. was not planning to intervene in a communist takeover of Taiwan, but once the Korean War here started, the U.S. chose to protect the island from the communists. Violence between both sides continued into the 1950s. To date, there has been no treaty ending the conflict, and the United States continues to provide protection to Taiwan. This has been the quick and dirty history of the Chinese Civil War, brought to you by WarScholar.com.